Okay, uh, from 2x, any takers? The stuff on the bottom piece is just junk um, on the surface of the slide. Dermatified Brahma. That is a great thought, and the main differential. This is not Dermatified Brahma, but that is the main mimic of what we're seeing here. So I'm going to leave that in because, because you said exactly the kind of thing that you should be thinking, especially from 2x. shaped and I feel like I see some pigment I was thinking about like a cellular blue or like DPN. Good. Yes, this is a blue nevus. To me, I would not call this cellular, but there are variable opinions about how much is enough for cellular. This is probably more cellular than most of the blue nevi that you see in sign out because a lot of times we see little tiny blue nevi in daily derm path practice. To me, this is in the range of just a normal blue nevus, but that's because I've seen a lot more blue nevi than you have. So um, and once, once you see some really cellular ones, then you'll be like, oh yeah, that is cellular. They can look pretty scary. But yes, exactly. It's kind of a wedge shaped, an upside down triangle, right? Broader at the top, thinner at the bottom. They often track along adnexal structures like hair follicles, just like deep penetrating nevi do, and how to, or deep penetrating melanocytoma. How to sort those two out is a little more complicated than we have time for, but I have a whole video about that. You can go watch it if you like. From low power, I like your point that, that one of you made about could look like DF because at the periphery, it often trickles out and traps collagen, just like a dermatofibroma does. One clue, oh, and dermatofibromas and blue nevi both have pigment, but the pigment is different. In blue nevi, it's melanin, and in dermatofibromas, it's almost always hemocytorin. Now, from here, it's not possible to tell those two apart. So the one clue that helps me the best from low power to favor blue nevus is if there's not much epidermal hyperplasia. Usually, dermatofibromas get epidermal hyperplasia with flattening of the reedy, and blue nevi don't. But look here, this case is an exception. I'd say that's some tabling. Elongated reedy, they're flat at the bottom, yet it's still a blue. So the rules get broken sometimes. But generally, you know, uh, so yeah, I think blue was a, I mean, uh, DF was a very, very fair thought from low power, especially. Um, and uh, usually the they, these um, lesions lack overlying epidermal change. So we go closer and we see that there are spindle cells that are kind of in fascicles with dense collagen in the background. The collagen in the background of a blue nevus is almost always denser than the background dermis. There is melanin pigment, which is usually fine, powdery, speckled pigment, some of which is in the spindled melanocytes, and some of which is more blobby and, can, uh, and chunky and is in with, within background uh, melanophages. And in this case, there were some scattered cells that were kind of enlarged and hyperchromatic, and that's totally fine. That's this random kind of degenerative atypia that we see in regular nevi, we can also see in blue. I feel like it's pretty subtle here, but some people it might catch their eye and they may say it's kind of like a so-called ancient change in a nevus. What we mean by that is random scattered, enlarged kind of hyperchromatic nuclei with no other features that are worrisome, right? No mitoses or other features. So random occasional atypical cells in an otherwise normal nevus is probably benign. Again, in real life, is a little more complexity than that, but for practical purposes, is usually going to be benign if everything else looks normal about the nevus, a random enlarged hyperchromatic cell in a conventional a regular nevus or in a blue nevus, okay? It's, it's okay to have occasional enlarged cells. I usually do look a little closer um, at blue nevi in older sun damaged adults just to make sure that I don't see mitotic activity or really wild, you know, more diffuse atypia because there are some melanomas that can mimic uh, blue nevus. And of course, additional workup can be done um, depending on um, the, the particulars of each individual case, right? And blue nevi tend to be strongly positive for HMB45, really diffuse strong positivity. I don't usually use HMB45 very often in practice, but this is one setting where it can be particularly helpful. There are others, but I just don't find it a very useful stain. So it's, it's one of the least used melanocytic markers for me personally. Blue nevus.